Hello folks and goats, my name is Griffin and welcome to the Command Valley. Thank you to GameRid for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing so, check out the link in the description below. We will have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder. We will have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description box that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley. Check out our awesome perks including early access to videos, access to exclusive deck techs, and play commander with the command valley over discord. Now commander legends is coming close. We're going to keep on the hype train and build another commander from commander legends. Today we're going to be building Arkelos Lagoon Mystic. He is one black, green, blue for a 2-4 legendary creature, Turtle Shaman. He reads, as long as Arkelos Lagoon Mystic is tapped, other permanents enter the battlefield tapped. And as long as Arkelos is untapped, other permanents enter the battlefield untapped. Now before I go into this deck and the way I have built it, I just want to put a disclaimer. This is an expensive deck. This is not a cheap budget build. This is definitely a deck that you will have to spend a lot of money on if you don't have the cards already. That being said, it is also a very powerful deck. Now, Arkelos Lagoon Mystic has some really cool synergies involving involving his text, allowing us to put our permanents onto the battlefield untapped, like an Amulet of Vigor, and also having him cause permanents to come into play tapped when he is tapped. So we have some flexibility here in what we want to do, but mostly you're either going to go combo or stacks in this Sultai build. The way I've decided to build this deck is as a combo-tastic deck. We have the best and quickest combos in this deck, and we use our Kralos mostly for the fact that he brings things into play untapped, so a lot of our ram spells that normally take a little bit to get going can get us off on a quicker foot. So beginning in this deck, let's go over the combos. Now in the Sultai Colors, there's a lot of popular combos, and here are a couple of the ones that we've put in here. With blue-black, we have the opportunity to play Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation. Thassa's Oracle is blue-blue for a 1-3 Merfolk Wizard. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue. Put up to one of them on top of your library, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. And Demonic Consultation is one black for an instant. Name a card. Remove the top six cards of your library from the game and reveal the next card to all players. If it is the card named, put it into your hand. If not, remove that card from the game and continue revealing the top card of your library and removing it from the game until the named card appears. The way that this combo works is if you have both of these in your hand, you can cast the Thassa's Oracle and holding priority you cast the Demonic Consultation naming a card that isn't in your deck. Obviously, you won't reveal it off of Demonic Consultation, so we'll exile your entire library. Then when the Thassa's Oracle's ETB trigger resolves, you will have no cards in your library, and his effect will cause you to win the game. The next combo we have in here is the Food Chain and Eternal Scourge combo. Food Chain is two in a green for an enchantment. Remove a creature you control from the game. Add X mana of any color to your mana pool, where X is the removed creature's converted mana cost plus one. This mana may be spent only to play creature spells. Then Eternal Scourge is 3 generic. For a 3-3 Eldrazi Horror, you may cast Eternal Scourge from Exile. When Eternal Scourge becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, Exile Eternal Scourge. So the way this works is that you have Food Chain out on the battlefield and you cast the Eternal Scourge. You can remove the Eternal Scourge from the game with the Food Chain to add 4 mana to your mana pool. You can use 3 of that to cast Eternal Scourge back from Exile and repeat this process until you have infinite mana for creature spells. Then you can use any one of the other combo pieces in this deck with your infinite mana, whether it be Gadwick the Wizened, that will allow you to draw your entire library until you get into Thassa's Oracle, a Walking Ballista where you can put as much mana as you want into it and then just dome your opponents, but we will get to Walking Ballista in a little bit. The next combo we have in here is the Protean Hulk, Micaeus, and Walking Ballista combo. Protean Hulk is 5 green green for a 6 6 beast. When it is put into a graveyard from play, search your library for any number of creature cards with total converted mana cost 6 or less and put them into play. Then shuffle your library. So, with our many ways of sacrificing creatures, we sacrifice the Protean Hulk and we go and find two specific creatures. The first is Micaeus the Unhallowed. For 3 black black black, we have a 5 5 legendary creature zombie cleric with Intimidate. Whenever a human deals damage to you, destroy it. Other non human creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 and have Undying. The next creature we'll get is Walking Ballista. For XX, you get a 0 0 artifact creature construct. Walking Ballista enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. For 4 generic, you can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Walking Ballista. And you can remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from Walking Ballista and it deals 1 damage to any target. So the way that this combo works is that you use Protean Hulk to get Micaeus and Walking Ballista onto the battlefield at the same time. 
Then, all you need to do is have a way of sacrificing the Walking Ballista, and it will come back onto the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter due to Micaeus giving it undying. Then, you just remove the plus one plus one counter from Walking Ballista to deal one damage to any one of your opponents, then sacrifice it again, bring it back with Undying, and then repeat this process until you have finished your opponents. This combination also requires a sacrifice outlet, so anything like a Viscera Seer or an Ashnaut's Altar will get you there. Another combo in this deck is the Palancron and Vorniclex combo. Palancron is 5 blue blue for a 4-5 with flying. When Palancron comes into play, untap up to 7 lands. And for 2 blue blue, you can return Palancron to its owner's hand. Then Vorniclex is 6 green green for a 7-6 legendary creature Praetor with trample whenever you tap a land for mana, and 1 mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced. And whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, that land doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. The way this combo works is that you cast the Palancron, you untap 7 lands, and if you have Vorniclex out on the battlefield, doubling your mana, you can tap those 7 lands to create 14 mana, use 2 blue blue to return the Palancron back to your hand, and then cast it again for 5 blue blue, leaving 3 mana left over in your mana pool. And when Palancron comes into play, you will untap 7 lands again, untapping your lands, where you can tap them again for 14 mana, repeat this process until you have infinite mana, where you can use either on the Walking Ballista, Gadwick the Wizened, or any other X spell effects such as Torment of Hellfire, Estanguinate, or Blue Sun Zenith. And then our fifth combo is the Sensei's Divining Top, Aether Flux Reservoir, and Bolas's Citadel combo. Bolas's Citadel is 3 black 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 for a legendary artifact. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play the top card of your library. If you cast a spell this way, pay life equal to its converted mana cost rather than pay its mana cost. You can also tap and sacrifice 10 non-land permanents and each opponent loses 10 life. Sensei's Divining Top is 1 generic for an artifact and for 1 generic look at the top 3 cards of your library then put them back in any order. Then you can tap it and draw a card then put Sensei's Divining Top on top of its owner's library. Then we have Aetherflux Reservoir which is 4 generic for an artifact. Whenever you cast a spell, you gain 1 life for each spell you've cast this turn. Then you can pay 50 life and Aetherflux Reservoir deals 50 damage to target creature or player. Now the way that this combo works is having Bolas's Citadel out, you can cast the Sensei's Divining Top, immediately tap it to draw a card and put the Sensei's Divining Top back on top of your library. With Bolas's Citadel, you can immediately replay it for one life and repeat this process either until you get a tutor or draw into Aetherflux Reservoir. Now when you've casted Aetherflux Reservoir, the next time that you cast the Sensei's Divining Top from the top of your library, you will gain a ridiculous amount of life because you have casted the Sensei's Divining Top X amount of times and gain that much life. And you can just repeat this process, draw your entire library, and either dome your opponents with the Aetherflux Reservoir or cast every spell on your deck. Now that we've talked about the combos that are in this deck, let's talk about the ways that we can get those combos out. We have many tutors and way of bringing things from our deck or from our graveyard back to the battlefield so that we can use them to win the game. The first is Fauna Shaman. For 1 and a green, we have a 2-2 Elf Shaman, and for green and tap, discard a creature card, search your library for a creature card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. This can find us any one of our creature-based combos, say we have a food chain in our hand and we just need to find the Eternal Scourge, we can use Fauna Shaman to do so. Or if we need to find the Protean Hulk and have enough mana to cast the Protean Hulk, then you can do so as well. Mystical Tutor, for 1 blue we have an instant, search your library for an instant or sorcery card and reveal that card, shuffle your library then put that card on top of it. This can find us any one of our instant and or sorcery pieces whether it be the Demonic Consultation, another tutor that can find anything in our deck, or simply if we need to find a certain counter spell to protect us if we have the combos in hand. Vampiric Tutor is one black for an instant search your library for a card, then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. You lose two life. Demonic Tutor is one and a black for a sorcery, search your library for a card and put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. Grim Tutor is one black black for a sorcery, search your library for a card and put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. You lose three life. Diabolic Tutor is 2 black black for a sorcery, search your library for a card and put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. Wishcaw Talisman is 1 and a black for an artifact, it enters the battlefield with 3 wish counters on it. For 1 generic, you can tap and remove a wish counter from Wishclaw Talisman, search your library for a card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. An opponent gains control of Wishclaw Talisman. Activate this ability only during your turn. Now the reason we're not really worried about giving it to an opponent is because when we tutor something up from our deck, we're up supposedly going to win that turn, so it doesn't really matter that we're giving it to an opponent. A nice cheap alternative to tutor spells. We have Tooth and Nail, which is 5 green green for a sorcery, choose 1. Search your library for up to two creature cards, reveal them, and put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Or, put up to two creature cards from your hand into play. You can entwine it for two, which means you can choose both, if you pay that cost. This essentially means we can find many of our creature-based combos, getting the Protean Hulk, or just getting the Micaeus and the Walking Ballista, or you can get the Vorinclex and the Palancron. 
And the last one we have, and my personal favorite, is Emergent Ultimatum. For black black, green green green, blue blue, you have a sorcery that says search your library for up to three monocolor cards with different names and exile them. An opponent chooses one of those cards. Shuffle that card into your library. You may cast the other cards without paying their mana cost. Exile Emergent Ultimatum. Now the flexibility on this card is very nice because it doesn't just find creatures, it finds any monocolor cards. So you can find three disastrous cards that will just ultimately win you the game. And it doesn't really matter what your opponents pick. You can find a tutor card, a protean hulk, and a walking ballista. You can find Thassa's Oracle, Demonic Consultation, and a tutor. You can find Omniscience, Vorinclex, and Palancron. Many different ways of being able to win off of Emergent Ultimatum. So it's up to you to figure out how you want to win and what pointless choice you want to give to your opponents. Now let's talk about the ways we have of interacting with our graveyard. We have a sub-theme in this deck of using our graveyard also to our advantage. For instance, we have Hermit Druid, which is 1 and a green for a druid. For green and tap, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a basic land card. Put that card into your hand and put all other reveal cards into your graveyard. So this is a nice way of putting a mass amount of cards into our graveyard since we're playing a minimal amount of basic lands. Buried Alive is 2 and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to 3 creature cards and put them into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. And then once we've casted one of our graveyard fillers, we can then cast one of our reanimate spells that we have in this deck. We have Phyrexian Delver, which is 3 black black for a 3-2 zombie. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. You lose life equal to that card's converted mana cost. Reanimate, which is 1 black for a sorcery. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. You lose life equal to its converted mana cost. Dread Return is 2 black black for a sorcery. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. You can also flashback it by sacrificing 3 creatures. You also have Blood for Bones, which is 3 and a black for a sorcery as an additional cost to the spell sacrifice a creature. Return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, then return another creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So even if we don't find one of our combo pieces, such as a Protean Hulk or an Eternal Scourge, we can still get some disastrous plays by playing Vorinclex, by playing Jin Jitaxis, Core Augur, or even the Palancron. And even the Palancron, which went on the battlefield, is very easy for us to find another one of our combo pieces. Now, as you can tell, a lot of these spells are very mana intensive, but the really nice thing about our commander is if he is on the battlefield, when we cast ramp spells that put lands onto the battlefield tapped, we can untap those if he's untapped. So cards like Secure Tribelder, which is one in a green for a Snake Shaman, which you can sacrifice to put a basic land onto the battlefield tapped. Wood Elves and Spring Bloom Druid, which you, when they enter the battlefield, you can get lands and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Farseek and Rampant Growth, Cultivate, Kodama's Reach, Nissus Pilgrimage, all find you lands and put them onto the battlefield tapped. However, with our commander out, they come out untapped, which means we can use that mana immediately, which can progress us into the game very quickly. And we have the new ramp card from Commander Legends, Reshape the Earth, which is 6 green 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 for a sorcery, where you can search your library for up to 10 land cards, not just basic land cards, and put them onto the battlefield tap, and then shuffle your library. So with our commander out, we can spend 9 mana to get 10 lands that come onto the battlefield untapped. With the root of the deck done and over, let's talk about the ways that we need of interacting with our opponents. Because we are playing combos, we want ways of protecting those combos, so we've included a lot of interaction in the way of counter spells. Dispel is one blue for an instant that counters a target instant spell, which can counter a counter spell coming our way, or a removal spell. Swan Song, which is one blue for an instant counter target enchantment instant or sorcerer spell. Its controller puts a 2 2 blue bird creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Arcane Denial is one and a blue for an instant counter target spell. Its controller may drop to two cards at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep, and you draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Counter Spell Classic, just blue blue for an instant that counters target spell. Delay is one and a blue for an instant counter target spell. If the spell is countered this way, exile it with three time counters on it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. Fierce Guardianship is two and a blue. For an instant, if you control a commander, you may cast a spell without paying its mana cost, and you can counter target non-creature spell. Whirlwind Denial is two and a blue for an instant. For each spell and ability your opponents control, counter it unless its controller pays four generic. And then we've included Force of Will, which is an instant for three blue blue. You may pay one life and exile a blue card from your hand rather than pay the spell's mana cost and counter target spell. Very helpful in a pinchy situation. In reacting to our opponent's board, we have Nature's Claim, which is one green for an instant. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Its controller gains four life. Into the Royal, which is one in a blue for an instant with Kicker for one in a blue. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If the spell was kicked, draw a card. And then cards that interact with our opponent's board that work really well with our commander. Root Maze is one green for an enchantment. Artifacts and lands enter the battlefield tapped. This is a very nice redundancy effect with our commander that can stop our opponents from comboing off quickly. Orb of Dreams, which is three generic for an artifact. Permanents enter the battlefield tapped. 
And lastly, for a couple of card draw spells, we've included Mystic Remora, which is one blue for an enchantment with a cumulative upkeep cost of one generic. And whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays four generic. Sylvan Library, which is one in a green for an enchantment. At the beginning of your draw step, you may draw two additional cards. If you do, choose two cards in your hand drawn this turn. For each of those cards, pay for life or put that card on top of your library. Ristic Study, which is two and a blue for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless that pair pays one. Now in the beginning stages of a game, it is perfectly reasonable to use one of your tutors to find one of the card draw enchantments such as Ristic Study or Mystic Remora, allowing you to draw cards throughout the game, especially if you are not in a position to win at the moment. And then the last card draw spell we have in here is Rudic Armasaur, which is one green green for a 2-5 dinosaur. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of a creature or land that isn't a mana ability, you may draw a card. And that is the basis of this deck. If you would like to see the full deck list, including the lines, then please check out the link in the description below. We will also have a copy and pasteable list of the deck list, which you can take over to GameGrip's website and get all these cards shipped directly to your house. Now, I did want to state again that this is a expensive deck. It is not a, it's not a hyper competitive deck. I wouldn't say it's a 10 out of 10, but it's still very powerful and it's not everyone's cup of tea. I've made this deck in a way that would be fun for me. So it might not be the fastest, the most quickest, or competitive CDH deck, and that's okay. If you have any other fun, interesting, and powerful includes you would include in this deck, please let us know in the comment section below. We love to hear what you guys' suggestions are, and we try our best to respond to them. But that is it for our deck tech today. Thank you so much for joining and listening. We really appreciate it. And we just wanted to remind you, if you haven't already, and like our content, please like this video and subscribe to our channel, and check out all of our other cool deck techs and gameplay videos and podcast episodes that we release on our channel. Another reminder that every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, we stream Brawl on Arena. Come check us out on twitch.tv slash commandvalley and come hang out and talk about the Commander Legends spoilers and have a good time. The links to our social media will be in the description box below so you can head on over to our Facebook and Twitter and follow us there. Again, we appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next Commander Legends deck tech.